Welcome, good morning. I'm so proud of those of you who came forward and are, thank you, Cher, who came forward, way to go. It's a wonderful day on this rainy summer day to praise God, to celebrate the gifts and the blessings that we are given. Um, welcome to our visitors. Our visitors are always a blessing in our midst. Please help our visitors to feel at home as they are among brothers and sisters. Um, some announcements we have this morning. We had a, a very successful, um, wonderful youth mission trip this past week. Huge thank you to Cindy. All of the kids actually are out of town this weekend, so not able to be here this Sunday, but we do have a video witness that they made that you will get to see. And you'll get to hear a little bit more about it during the message as well. Um, some things we have coming up, the Songs of Hope, concert, as you can see in the bulletin information about that, on July 19th. We are going to have about 80 musicians, youth, from around the world singing and playing music up front here. It would be a wonderful evening. We are hosting them here at Pilgrim that Friday night. Um, so we will be having a dinner for them and a breakfast ready for them the next on Saturday morning. If you are able and willing to help, let me know or let the office know. Um, that will be a really great event to be able to bring some wonderful music into our setting.
Come, holy God, offer us your mantle of love and power in this place. In the shelter of its love, let us lay before you our troubles, our longings, our hopes. Let its power open us to new ways through difficulty, struggle, and loss into your spirit's realm of joy and peace, so we may shape our congregation, community, country, and world with your grace. Come, holy God, in your presence there is fullness of glory. And let's sing together now hymn number 70, God is here as we your people meet.
The prayer of confession, let us finish that by saying, forgive us, Lord. We struggle to manifest the fruits of the Spirit, but often find ourselves bound by works of the flesh. We know the whole law is summed up in the single commandment to love our neighbor as ourselves, also to love God, and especially to love God. Yet we, recre we create fences around ourselves to keep neighbors outside, and we tell ourselves that we have no responsibility. Even in our own backyard, we bite and devour one another. We wish it were different. When Jesus calls us to follow him, we find every excuse to instead go home or to the workplace to finish something more important first. Yet we yearn to be more centered on you. Forgive us, Lord. Know that when we turn towards God, when we turn towards God's love, God's grace, and the embrace of God's spirit, we can find forgiveness and we can find the strength, the courage, and the hope to share peace, to share joy, and to love. Let us now do that with each other by simply telling those around you, Christ, peace and joy be with you. And peace and joy be with you. The first scripture reading is from Matthew, chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. Teacher, which of the commandments in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. I'm sorry to surprise you with this. I always forget to let people know. I'm gonna preface the scripture because it gets so busy. This is a piece from the letter to the Galatians. This is attributed to the Apostle Paul. Paul founded the church in Galatia, which is in Turkey, while he was actually sick in bed. The Galatian church is made up of um, Gentiles, which means these were folks who were not Jews before they came to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, before they became followers of the way. Now, when Paul left then, the Galatia church was very devoted to his teaching still, but there were leaders who came and said they needed to follow the Jewish law in order to be righteous before God. And what you're gonna see is a piece here of Paul telling them, no, Jesus changed all that. Galatians chapter five, verse one, and verses 13 through 26. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you do not consume one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, em Envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like this. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, 
The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us be also guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. Amen. Thank you, Julie. That was impressive, Julie, your, the reading of going through the works of the flesh. You did a fabulous job. Really quick, if you could by you, and I'm going to come to you, and I'm just going to tell you something that God loves you so, so very much. That's something Jesus taught us, that God's love is always with you, no matter how hard life can be. You are loved. You are a beautiful, beloved child of God. Now, when we know that, then it's easier for us to be kind, to be caring, to be loving, to find joy, even when life is hard. So... I would love for you to do that right now by simply giving your grandparents a great big hug and tell them that you love them. Can you do that? And everybody will turn and look that way so they're not all watching you. And it's important for us to model that for each other and for the children in our lives and in the congregation. So let us make a special effort today after worship to smile, to greet each other, to show kindness and care. And now I'd like to have Cindy come on up. We had a wonderful week bearing God's fruit into the world. And I am so absolutely privileged to have been able to do it with Cindy. Cindy is such a joy and a gift um, for so many people in our world, including the congregation. I'm going to give you just a short, brief um, description of what we did. We stayed at the Afton State Park, which was beautiful and magical because there were fireflies galore. I have never seen anything like it. It was just, I mesmerized watching the lights twinkle through the fields, the woods, and that it was a, a fabulous reminder of God's light and Jesus in the darkness of the world. We spent um, hours serving in different ways. We, we were working for helping organizations that work with little children. We cleaned buses for Head Start. We worked at a drop-in center for teens who are homeless. We packaged meals for children. We packaged meals for seniors. We spent time with folks in a memory care unit. Um, we just crossed the whole board of age groups. It was fabulous. And um, we also spent time learning. We spent time with G. Ray, a very dear, dear young man in Cindy and Steve's life, um, who I've had the blessing of knowing as well. He's an immigrant from originally the Congo and then to South Africa and to here the U.S. Um, it was a great learning experience for the kids. Um, and we also had fun together. If you ever play keep away in the water, you... Cindy is a fish. She's wonderful. We had a lot of fun together, and I'm going to turn it over to Cindy right now. Go ahead. It was a lot of fun. I want to explain my shirt, because some people are wondering why it's a pig. And when we started the Pilgrim Youth Group a few years ago, they decided it should be P-Y-G for Pilgrim Youth Group, and so then the kids made these shirts, which I'm very proud to wear. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone here for buying baked goods and supporting the kids. Um, they represent you amazingly. Um, Pastor Karen did a great job centering us for the week. We had devotion twice a day. Um, the theme was love your neighbor as yourself and the greatest commandment, of course. And we kept revisiting it over and over. And it was like, okay, yep, keep focused. And the kids, you know, they just feed me. They're so great. 
Um, Brooke Hanlon, we like to think of her as like our own camp counselor. You know, she's a, a, gonna be a senior in high school, so she was the older person in our group, and the kids would ask her about high school, and, and she would just tell them how to study hard and take advantage of all the opportunities, and you, you just can't buy that kind of role model. Um, Ellie Stummy was just a great member of the group, um, she was, I think, our organizer. She would get all the chores organized. Um, she's an awesome charades player, so if you want to have fun with Ellie. Tatum Snooshead is just Miss Enthusiasm. She was just ready to go no matter what we did. Um, she made a diving catch and keep away that I just won't forget. <laughs> and um, Elliot Van Antwerp, he just amazed me in the nursing home. My heart just tripled in size to see this young, you know, 14-year-old boy introduce himself to people that, you know, had memory issues and say, hi, I'm Elliot, what's your name? And he was telling, we were talking about the fireflies, and this woman told this story about when she was young, and she put the fireflies in a jar, and, you know, he was asking her about it, and how, anyway, I could go on and on, but I shouldn't. <laughs> so, but anyway, thank you very much, and I think you should be very proud of them. They were they just represented Pilgrim and you very well, so. Yeah, the kids were amazing. They were such a blessing and it was wonderful to, to see their moments of inspiration, the times when they had patience and understanding with each other and they modeled care even when it wasn't easy. The times they came forward with some very deep insights about the scriptures we studied, which was what we read today. I didn't include all the works of the flesh. I didn't think we needed to get into that. But we did focus on loving your neighbor as yourself and bearing fruit into the world. And now I'm gonna show you a video clip that they made, um, especially Brooke put a lot of work into this video clip. Hi, I'm Ellie. On the first day of the, our mission trip, we cleaned buses for Head Start preschoolers. Cleaning the buses was pretty hard and it took us a long time, but we managed to clean five full buses so that the Head Start could pass their bus inspection and then carry the preschoolers to and from their Head Start classes. There were lots of success stories that we heard about too. After lunch, the second thing we did was go to the U of M campus and talk to a man named G. Ray. G. Ray is from Congo in Africa and after his family became activists and started to speak out about some of the bad things that were happening in the Congo. They knew they had to leave overnight, so they fled to South Africa and they were homeless for a while. After G. Ray's family found a place to live, G. Ray went into high school and educated, got educated and graduated, and then he became an exchange student at Duluth East in Minnesota. And then he spent G. Ray came to America, he ended up going to UMD and now works at the U of M campus with a kid named Vivian. I learned that immigrants have it way harder than us natives do, and they have to go through many struggles and long periods of time without even seeing their family. And that really hit hard because I know I would never be able to do that. Thank you for your support and letting us come on this mission trip. It was really fun and I learned a lot. I'm Elliot. I had a very fun time on this mission trip. One of my favorite parts was at going to Como Park, where a sweet talk to the lifeguard into letting me go backwards down the zip line with one hand. Another one of my favorite parts was going to Second Harvest, where we packed over 12,000 meals and made a huge difference. I definitely had a great time on this mission trip, and I hope to do it again. P.S. Thank you for, su for your support, Pilgrim Church, a.k.a. home of the PYG Pigs. I'm Tatum. On the mission trip, we went to many places that gave us new opportunities and gave us a chance to help people in need. Two of the places we went to were Books for Africa and the Drop-In Center. At the Drop-In Center, we made lasagna for teenagers that are homeless. The Drop-In Center is a place where kids ages 16 to 24 without homes go to to hang out, try to get jobs, and play games. We had fun playing heads up while waiting for the lasagna to cook. This, 
This opportunity made me think about how kids become homeless and what we can do to help. The other place we went to was Books for Africa. They There they send, sent donated books to Africa. There we organized them into books that could be sent and others that couldn't be sent. Some that could, couldn't, were American history books and other things like that. Those two places are really cool to volunteer at because you knew you are making a difference in someone's life. Hopefully I have a chance to do something like this again. Thank you for supporting our mission trip. Hi, this is Brooke. Um, one of the uh, two interesting places we got to go to on the mission trip was we got to go to Feed My Starving Children. Um, and there we got to pack lots of, lots of food for children all over the world who need it. And it's supposed to be um, very specially made for their nutrition. And we had a lot of fun doing that because we make it like a competition. Um, we also got to work with some elders um, with memory loss issues um, on the last day. And we got to sing with them and do a craft where we made butterflies um, and flowers and got to decorate them. And it was very interesting talking to the residents and seeing their, uh, and hearing their stories. And it was really interesting. Um, thank you. As you can see, we had a, a very meaningful time, and some of the things the kids said, then I asked them to write a statement about the week and what they learned, and, and they all focused on what they learned in Scripture. As you can see, they learned that there's lots of good in the world, to love your neighbor as yourself, and, to, and we talked about what that looked like, to be nice no matter what people's reactions will be, and we shouldn't ever be a bystander even though it may be really hard, but that we shouldn't just be a bystander. We have been given the wonderful gift of freedom in so many ways in our country, and Christ gives us the freedom from sin, from brokenness, and the hope of hope. As Paul wrote, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How are you bearing those fruits into the world with the freedom that we have? May we do so with abundance. Amen. Let us now stand. We're going to sing together the occasional verses from Won't You Let Me Be Your Servant, and then I will read the one piece. So let us stand now. We'll sing together verse 1.
of Won't You Let Me Be Your Servant. on a journey, travelers on the road of faith, we are here to help each other go the mile and bear the load. Together we can reach beyond ourselves to offer love and service to all. In this giving we will show the world a different way to be. You may be seated. And now with free freedom and love and, and enjoying the gifts we have, may we give our gifts to God. Almighty God, just as you led the people of Israel to freedom, so too you led our ancestors to freedom in a new world. Help us, O oh Lord, to remind our country of your presence so that we will not abuse the freedoms we are given and neglect our responsibilities. Give us the faith to live lives guided by your Holy Spirit Help us as a community of faith be a bold and empowered part of your mission. Give us the courage, the wisdom, and strength to live with honesty, peace, and justice. 
Most of all, help us to know your love so that we too may bring compassion and love into a world often torn by hate, oppression, and violence. We pray this morning for the women and men who serve our country with the intent of preserving our freedoms and protecting the rights of people around the world. Guide our country's leaders, we pray, O sovereign God, so that our country uses its freedom and power to glorify you and to care for the world that you have created and so dearly love. We also pray this morning for people all over the world who don't know what freedom is like. Give them hope and reveal new ways of living, ways of creating healthy change. Make your presence be known to them so that they know in Christ they are given the ultimate freedom and the courage to pursue change. We pray, O oh God, for our congregation, for our denomination, for the Christian church as a whole, that you give us strength to be visionary, loving and caring, to bring your hope and peace into the world in ways that are embracing and rejoicing in diversity. Help us face the challenges that we are to face. Help us to have your hope and your love. We give thanks for the mission trip this past week for safety and for the ability to serve so many different people. We pray for the organizations that are working hard to make change, to care, and to bring about love to other people in our country, in our world. We pray for the seeds that have been planted in the mission trip participates, but also in the congregation. Help us to bear fruit in wonderful new ways. We pray, O oh God, for your world. We give thanks for Stacy, Joseph, Siri, and Mirat's safety, and pray for self tra safe travels for them and others that are in our hearts who are traveling abroad or even in the U.S. In a moment now, we bring our prayers, our concerns, our joys to you, O holy God. And now together we pray saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. When our risen Lord was at the table with his disciples, he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. This is the meal given to us out of great love. Our Savior invites all who trust in him to share in this feast, to be nourished. And in so many ways, may our eyes be open to see the risen Savior's presence in our world and in our lives. Let us now pray. Prepare our hearts for this meal with our prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give our thanks and praise. Holy are you, O God, by your own power you raised Christ Jesus from death to life. Through his victory over the grave we are set free from the bonds of sin and the fear of death to share the glorious freedom of the children of God. In his rising to life you promise eternal life to all who believe in him the hope of life beyond this world. We praise you that as we break bread in faith, we shall know the risen Christ among us. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that this bread and this cup may be for us the body and blood of our Lord, and the hope 
that you give to us within and beyond this world, that we and all who share in this feast may be one with Christ and he with us. Fill us with your spirit that with joy we may be your faithful people, bearing your fruit into the world, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, just think of that, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. After giving thanks to God, he broke it, offered it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks to God, said, this cup is the new covenant sealed with my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. May we come forward now and share this wonderful meal given to us out of God's love. May you be nourished in the days to come by the gift of this meal, nourished not just by the bread and juice, but by the love of God's Spirit. Let us now stand and sing together, closing our time of worship. We will sing We Are Called, and it is on the insert. Please join me in the unison benediction. Go forth wearing the mantle given by our God. Part the waters of injustice. 
make a way for compassion to be offered to all that God loves. We are free in so many ways, especially by the grace of our God. We are free to love, to bear kindness, to bear compassion into the world, and may we do so abundantly. Go forth now, knowing that you are a beloved child of God. There is nothing, nothing in this world that can change that. Go with peace and bear fruit to others. Amen.